and the federal government has extended the phase two of the ease of lockdown in the country by another week. Boss Mustafa, the chairman of the presidential task force PTF on COVID-19, made the announcement at a briefing of the PTF which held in Abuja, the federal capital territory. The PTF has reached advanced stages of submitting the CIST interim report and recommendations for next steps. It has also considered that due to the upcoming Salah festivities which coincide with the expiration of the current phase, it will be prudent to extend by one week from 29th of July 2020 until Thursday, 6th of August 2020. The PDF chairman noted that the president, Mohammed Bukhari, had approved the extension of phase two of the eased lockdown by another four weeks and was due to expire on Wednesday. Joining us now is Dr. Emery Agunwa, public affairs analyst. A pleasure to have you join us. The, the phase two of the ease lockdown has been extended uh, by one week. Um, in your assessment, was there any difference at all? Um, basically, I think uh, if we're looking at the, the thank you, Felicity. Um, um, if we're looking at the reason why they extended it, which is basically for the religious celebration, I think is uh, is something that needs to be uh, applauded. Um, we know the whole religious diversities and the, the children. The children are always going to come out, and um, they'll have to do a little, a little bit of celebration. So I think extending for one week. Um, in, in, in quotes, is in the best interest of the country. But we also have other arguments as regards um, the authenticity of the numbers when we are looking at them. And are we really working on the real um, issue as regards Nigeria and COVID? Yeah, when but you say extending it for one numbers, week as, uh, as regards um, this religious celebration is something I think is, uh, logically speaking, is a welcome development from the government. When you say authentication of the uh, figures, what do you mean exactly, sir? Okay, so uh, but if you look at the progression, the chart progression of every other country, ours looks totally different. Okay, it looks totally different. The rate of recovery uh, is quite um, is is an interesting um, number. Okay, and um, and also looking at the cost of treating each person. Uh, the last time I saw it on the news, uh, news I think is um, a million naira per person per day. I mean that's that's incredible. I mean that's massive. So looking at this stuff, you know, we are Nigerians. We have to ask questions. And uh, we know that uh, on the on the streets, the uh, adherence to to safety measures and a couple of other things, the face mask and washing of hands are not very, are not totally on the optimal. And the numbers actually are not increasing where it should increase it. So have a lot of questions if you're a smart Nigerian, yeah. So that's one of the things we've been trying to look at. But logically speaking, like I say, in quotes, it's a good move by the government to extend it by one week. But we also ask it. What are we dealing with right here? Is it really the case, or are we trying to see if we can just uh, hang on and um, and ensure that the right. budget from, from, from what you're saying, it, it, it does seem like life has come back to normal. Businesses are open. Uh, there are more movement, um, unrestricted movement. Um, those our actions collectively as a nation indicate an honest desire to curb the spread of the virus. Because, I mean, it's almost like life is back to normal. So uh, life is back to normal. Life is back to normal. Life is really back to normal for the average Nigerian. Okay, what's not normal is the fact that somehow the back of our minds we know that there is something they call COVID, and we are not really ready ready to brace ourselves to fight it and use everything within our resources. If it means immune, if it means about all we are saying is life is back to normal to the best um, of my knowledge. Not very, not one hundred percent, but maybe eighty percent. Because what is chasing us out from the house is bigger than what is out there. People are looking for survival. An average Nigerian is looking for survival. Numbers don't lie. An average Nigerian is not sure of up to $100 a month. Okay, so what it means is that when I say up to $10, okay? Now, all we are trying to look at here is what do we do to get our lives back together? And I think the government needs to start making plans for that to ensure that the, in, the, the supposedly back to normal life is, is back to normal properly. So we need a little bit of um, enforcement, a little bit of um, um, policy enforcement and to ensure that we live the best life 
seeing that COVID is here and it doesn't look like what's going out any moment from now. So we need to increase our life and uh, find options to get back to normal fully. Our economy is on the decline and we can't be in the house and pretend that our economy is making progress. Yeah, so surprisingly though, uh, a lot of persons, uh, when this conversation around COVID-19 comes up, they call it a scam or a government hoax. And there are some conspiracy theories going, flying around. Um, in your opinion, what has brewed this mistrust or misbelief, if you please? Okay, so I don't think um, COVID is a scam. But I think the way Nigerian government is handling it is, is not totally very, is not transparent. Okay, it's not very transparent. And we know something about um, not being transparent. It creates a lot of mistrust. And the uh, Nigerian government also doesn't have a history of uh, um, uh, trust equity when it comes to dealing with Nigerians, okay? So the more the numbers are coming out, the more, and basically we have a problem, uh, not that there are COVID, but the, the, the resources that is expended on COVID treatment is mind boggling. We are, we're looking at news every day and we're just asking, what kind of treatment will you spend a million naira per person per day? If not, that there is a need to to use it to mop up some kind of funds from somewhere. Okay, even cancer patients don't don't spend that much. I'm just saying. Okay, so this is the kind of transparency that we've not gotten in a very long while. And we are asking for it because if they come out playing up and tell us this is it, this is that, this is it, this is that, or we are trying to, okay, this is what we, let's, we believe you, but we're saying the numbers are adding up and the numbers are also adding up simultaneously uh, because the numbers represent money. As the numbers are increasing, so um, the, the cost of treatment is also increasing. And so um, now this money goes from somewhere to somewhere. What, what in specific yeah. terms would you like to see in the fight against this pandemic going forward? If you can do that in 40 seconds, it will be appreciated. Okay, so what I think we need to do is to get our local hospitals, our local healthcare centers to operate. All these, all these isolation centers, every hospital should have at least uh, um, an isolation center where COVID patients need to come. Let it, be, let it be a normal thing. Let it be a working treatment, okay? Not all these things that totally uh, press, press driven conversation that um, makes the whole money come out. So I think we need to get our health system working. That's the best way to get this whole COVID thing sorted out. All right, Dr. Time. Emiri Agumwa, Public Affairs Analyst, thank you very much for your time this morning. Thank you. Thank you, Felicity.